Jake Sermon, co-founder of Punchbowl News, Eugene Robinson, Washington Post columnist, and Daniel Plekta, senior fellow of the uh, American Enterprise Institute. All three are NBC News political contributors. Jake, you've covered Mark Meadows basically from the beginning of his, you know, backbench congressman trying to be influential with the Freedom Caucus, stumbling into being chief of staff. Um, for Mike Pence, that's a strong critique. Yeah. Um, when Mark Meadows was named to be chief of staff to President Trump, I can't tell you how many Republicans in Congress said this would be a train wreck. And this was before COVID, um, probably the most delicate emergency. Well, it was about two weeks before COVID, if I yeah, remember. But, yeah, but, yeah. but he became, but he was, he's, the rumbling started earlier than right. that. Um, during a public health emergency, as the, the former vice president said, you need to be clear, you need to be concise. Good information is key. Mark Meadows trafficked in conspiracy theories for as long as I've known him, and I've known him since he's been in Congress, or since, from his beginning of his political career. Uh, he was a um, uh, he was disorganized. He shifted from ask to ask on Capitol Hill. This was somebody who was. Uh, who, by the way, I'll just take issue with one thing that Pence said. He said he didn't serve the president well. That might be true from Pence's point of view, but but <laughs> Trump he did exactly what Trump well, wanted. Thank him you, to do. and that's yeah. the point I was going to make. Yes. You know. This happens all the time with Trump, Danny, where everybody wants to protect Trump. Oh, poor Trump. He was given bad advice or there was bad lawyers. Was, isn't Trump the one to pick the bad lawyers? Isn't you know, Trump the one that picks Mark Meadows? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. I'm not, I'm not quite as, as, as calm as, as Mike Pence, but um, <laughs> I, learned, I learned when I came to Washington that um, people who have bad staff are, are not great people. <laughs> Um, they, they have them. They attract each other, well, is what you're saying? Yeah, you, you hear it you on the hill all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, so-and-so, Senator so-and-so, he's, he's just a good man, but that staffer of his, that's a jackass. And they're like, no, 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 no. he's his jackass. <laughs> and that's and that's the Trump story, yeah. from soup to nuts. I will say on Capitol Hill, I, I, I'm sorry, Gene, but I just want to get this one point in. <laughs> We always have this this discussion, you know, is it the staffer? And then my colleague, John Bresnahan, always says to me, at some point, the staffer was hired by a member exactly. of Congress, and yeah. nothing that he or she does exactly. is divorced the from the person. The staffer is yeah. doing what the principal wants. Right. I mean, that's basically, the, that's why they keep Beautiful the staffer in place. And, that, and, and, I mean, the other thing Meadows um, did from the, we've learned from the January 6th committee and from what we've heard, is kind of tell everybody what they wanted to hear yeah. um, and give them the impression that he was on their side. Uh, and he was, and that's, no. I mean, not, not for a chief of staff yeah. at the White House. No, you can't do that. But, but there's, another, there's another important point here. Um, uh, being a member of Congress is terrible preparation to do any kind of governance. It just is. You have staff... You're not, you're engaged in tweeting, you're engaged in showmanship, you're not even engaged anymore in passing bills. We talk about this all the time. Right. And then you mm -hmm. go and get a real job, like chief of staff Which to the president really of the... Yeah, right. I mean, it is work. You are keeping the trains running on time. And he didn't have any idea what he was doing. And Meadows' yeah. biggest flaw as a human being is um, that he is constantly seeking people's approval. Exactly. And, and, and I found that all the time, even with Democrats. He would well, always say, I'm on his side. I'm it, on his it, well, it feels like he had some chip. And look, we all, I, we all have a chip that drives us. I have a giant one. Right. Yeah. I, I do too. I, I have multiple chips, so I'm not going to. We all have them. But it seems like he was always concerned he didn't belong and he wanted to prove that he did. But so then any approval, he sort of almost ran towards. And it was especially acute during the Trump era where yeah. every, the entire mm -hmm. Republican Party's existence was, was based yeah. on pleasing him. All yeah. right. The special counsel. I, this feels like Garland was damned if he did, damned if he didn't. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I would be surprised if Garland hadn't decided this well in advance, that this is what he was going to do if it looked like Trump's going to run, Biden says he's going to run. Do you think at all he should have just done this from the get-go? I mean, I, look, I was, in the, I was wondering why he didn't do it from the get-go. Well, just got it out of his hands, but I understand, you know, mm -hmm. prosecutors don't like to do that. <laughs> No, they don't like to do that. Yeah. And, um, uh, and you know, you're attorney general. You want to be in control. You yeah. want, you know, it's your show and your shop, and you want to take responsibility, and you want to do it. Um, but in retrospect, maybe you should have. Danny, I guess the question is, can Trump weaponize this to his benefit? And, I, and what I'm curious about is, is there fatigue in the party? We know there's fatigue in the party to him. Is there fatigue in his base to this, right? And I think we don't know yet. 
I think we have no idea. Uh, you know, look, we see the polls that, that have come out since the election where he has done significantly worse than he did prior to the election. I, I think also people do get sick and tired of someone who complains constantly about the people who are out to get him. You know, at the end of the day, if you're voting for somebody, yes, I understand, you know, they, people might believe the conspiracies. They might believe he actually is persecuted. In some instances, he genuinely was persecuted. But if that's all you're about, if every day all you do is whine to the American people about how evil Joe Biden is out to get you, you're going to lose out to the younger, hotter candidates. Yeah. I will say, but... I'm, you know, I'm not Come sure. On. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm look, sorry. So, but you I think, think this could, this, this could this boomerang gonna, to his benefit? Well, I think it pumps up a shrinking base or a shrunken base. Well, that's it. Pumps up a shrinking base. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But for the base, yeah. I think it definitely pumps them up. I, I think I'm it, very it cements their, um, their you I know, can't wait for his first rally. That they have with Trump. I'm curious if he can fill an amphitheater these days. But I will say my, my former boss of Politico, John Harris, who you all know, is uh, wrote a really good column this morning basically saying it doesn't look like Trump's having fun anymore. Like, mm -hmm. uh, when he first ran, there was a, mm -hmm. uh, despite all the disgusting things and false things mm -hmm. that he said, there was certainly an element of, man, this guy is having <laughs> fun you. in what he's doing. He was a happy warrior. Right. Yeah. And, and if you compare him to Ron DeSantis right now, if you're a Republican voter, I don't know. I, I, my crystal ball's always wrong. So... I, it, DeSantis looks like he's like he's having much more fun than Donald Trump, whose campaign rallies are not are just yeah. full of well, not lighthearted grievances, heavy hearted grievances. Yeah. He's, he's, look, he's if, exhausting. If it's, yeah. if it's true that Trump can no longer fill an amphitheater, mm -hmm. then no fun. Yeah. You know, we can start running the obit. But if he can, you know, right. watch him in front of a full house. No, I, I do. He think, will have fun. Look, <laughs> the Republican elites, the conservative media, have tried to dump a, Trump before, only for the exactly. voters to say, "Uh, uh," yeah. and Rupert Murdoch to say, "Okay," you know, right, Danny? But, but, I mean, but they haven't. They haven't had a choice. And they really haven't. I mean, mm. Trump really successfully diminished everyone around him. We still can say, what did he call Marco Rubio? What did he call him? Little Marco. Right? Little Marco. Yeah. We, can, we could, you know, what, what did he call Jeb Bush? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you're right. We know all the nicknames. Right. But, but, you know, the, the, the sad Ronda Sanctimonious, yeah. it just smacks of sort of being kind of lazy Glenn and attack. old. Yeah. And that really, really racist, weird yeah. racist yeah. Glenn Youngkin attack. So, eh. We got, we got a nose counter here from Capitol Hill. Kevin McCarthy, the, 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 the path to 218. Mm -hmm. Is Nancy Pelosi's absence actually make it even more difficult? Well, uh, two different thoughts here. For him to get to 218 on the speaker vote, mm -hmm. um, he has about four, I mean, let's say the majority's at 221, which is where it seems like it'll be, mm -hmm. 221 or 222. He ha So that gives him a three-vote majority to get the, the speaker. Okay, so there's Gates, Biggs. And uh, Bob Good uh -huh. and uh, Ken Buck. And oh. uh, all, there's you just, all, got, you just got more than, yeah, got more than Matt than. Rosendale from Montana. All yeah. of these folks have expressed some level of discomfort. A few different thoughts here. Number one, um, you're starting to see the Trump-aligned conservatives, people who, who don't like Kevin McCarthy, come out for McCarthy saying, like, what is your plan here? What are you doing otherwise? Um, and, you know, show me why he shouldn't be speaker. He's the only one who's close right. to 218. We'll see if that's important. Um, if there's no other alternative and the House can't gavel into session, because, by the way, there are other people, not conservatives, who say Kevin's the only person I will vote for. Uh, moderates who mm. say that. Right. So mm -hmm. there's there's push and pull here. I, I think there's, and that should be uh, uh, kept in mind. If he is Speaker, which I don't know if he will be, but let's just play the game that he is Speaker, it will be more difficult for him to pass bills without Nancy Pelosi in the House on the things that need to get done to govern things. Because Ooh. Nancy Pelosi, lover or hater, is the most effective legislative politician of our lifetime. And she will, she would, she would corral her exactly. for her Joe Biden, exactly. not for Kevin McCarthy. Right. Her mm -hmm. cranky, yes. her yeah. cranky progressives, she'll yeah. figure out how to get them. That's right. Kevin McCarthy may not have that kind of power. He will not. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.